So, good morning. Good to have everybody out with us this morning. Privileged to be here. Labor Day weekend, the unofficial end of summer. Uh, of course, we got a couple of weeks before that officially happens on the calendar with the, uh, I think it's the vernal equinox that happens. So, uh, so certainly uh, busy holiday weekend, a lot of traveling going on, uh, tragedy going on. Of course, I'm not even talking about car wrecks, the, the shooting. We mentioned that during our prayer time and Harold and his prayer time, the shooting down in West Texas, Odessa, Midland area. I did a little bit of research on it as best as I could have, and there's no rhyme or reason. This guy uh, hijacked a postal vehicle, and it was a drive-by mass shooting. He, he wasn't at work. He wasn't doing anything as such, and he was shooting indiscriminately at people in cars along the roadway and sidewalks. So certainly be in prayer for all of those families. Certainly be in prayer that uh, somehow, and, and I would be tending to think this would be more of a mental type of thing because uh, of the condition. And then we have the hurricane. Uh, Dorian is plowing up through the Bahamas as we speak in Category 5, and they didn't expect it to be that strong coming in there. So certainly let's be in prayer that uh, God might weaken this hurricane and it might not be so tragic with the loss of lives and property destruction. Certainly lots of opportunity to pray today and this weekend. Of course, all the holiday travelers, certainly we'd be in prayer for them as, as they travel safely as well. You know, hurricanes, I did a little research about today or this weekend. Uh, Labor Day is, is a pretty popular time for hurricanes, come to find out. So I did a little research on that. 1935, before they started actually naming hurricanes, it was the great Labor Day hurricane that hit Florida. Uh, Keys destroyed every building in the upper Keys, killed over 500 workers as they were working on the overland highway there. If you go to the Keys, if you drive on, that was uh, constructed by military men that was building that. Uh, also, we've had uh, uh, Elaine, David, Francis, and most recently Hermine back in 2016, if you recall. Uh, come up through the Gulf and hit the elbow there of Florida where Mexico uh, Beach area and we sent some support down to that area as well. Uh, that was over the Labor Day weekend. So certainly uh, we know that can be destructive and we know there's a lot of people out and about and, and out, of, out of with their homes because of that so let's be in prayer for them. But also Labor Day means homecoming and revival are just around the corner. And we know that uh, next Sunday morning we'll be celebrating our 189th homecoming. Uh, a lot of time here. A long time that this congregation has been meeting. And certainly a uh, testament to people being willing to serve. Because you don't stay around that long if you don't have people that's willing to serve and, and work in, in the uh, areas that's needed for. So again, I want to call for prayer. Uh, Brother Clayton be starting off and Andrew will be finishing so be praying for Clayton and his sermons and then also for Andrew as well and his sermons. We've heard both of these uh, men preach they're both fine preachers and I look forward to hearing their message. So certainly be in prayer. Be in prayer for our congregation and those visitors that may be coming uh, to hear the messages and uh, so certainly a lot, a lot more and then we need to ourselves as a congregation uh, ask ourselves a few questions. Do we believe that God is satisfied with our efforts as a congregation? Are we truly doing all that we can do to tell people about Jesus? Do we want to grow? Do I want this congregation, help the congregation to grow? Am I serving the Lord with the talent that he blessed me with? A lot of things that we can ask ourselves. Will this revival make a difference this year? I asked, I titled this sermon, and it's really I want us to look at ourselves. But if you answered no to any of these questions that I'd answered, maybe the next question you need to ask is, do I need revived? Because that's what revival is about. Uh, we, we often think of it evangelistic where we bring people in and they have opportunity 
accept Christ as our Savior. But revival is for us, for those that come and attend regularly that maybe need to be rededicated themselves in the, the Lord's service. And that's what we looked at or we're going to look at this morning. If you will, turn in your Bibles with me to the Gospel of Luke chapter 5. Now, if you recall, we have been looking at Acts uh, for the past several weeks and the results of Peter's preaching and all of Jesus' preparation uh, for his departure, preparing the disciples. This morning, we're going to look at where it all began, where all of Peter's and all of the disciples, where all of that that we studied for the past month began in, in Luke chapter 5. The first 11 verses is what we'll read, and then we'll go back and look and see how we can apply this to our own lives. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him to that he would thrust out a little from the land. And as he sat down and taught the, and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draft. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship that they should come out and help them. And they came and filled both ships so that they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the draft of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto to Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Now in this section, you know, of course we see here Peter accepting Christ's call to follow him. And they were going about their everyday business and doing, doing what they do for a living. And we see and we know about the effect of this because we've studied that in the book of Acts. Peter preached on the day of Pentecost. All the apostles had a part in that and some 3,000 people were saved that day and added to the church. So everything has to have a beginning. And this is where it begins for Peter. And this is where his effect on the kingdom begins. And I want to look at this little passage in relation to ourselves and that ask ourselves some things about being revived. The opportunity to serve. Well, we have opportunities to serve now just in with the vacancies that Gary and Chris have left. Lots of opportunities to serve. But what we have to examine ourselves and say is, am I willing to serve? Do I need revived? so that I can, can begin to serve. And I've got some questions that I want us to ask ourselves in this, and we're going to use this model. First being, am I available? Look at verses 3 and 4 again with me. <clears throat> and he says, He entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land, and sat down and taught the people out of the ships. And now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down our nets for a draft. Now, Peter had just met Jesus. And what we have to think about is what Peter was doing was vital to his livelihood. He was washing out his nets after a night of fishing. He was making preparations. It was the end of his work day, so to speak. And he was making preparations so that he could come in the next day and begin to go out and uh, do his daily routine of fishing. And we see here that Jesus uh, interrupts that as well. He made his property available for Jesus to use. Of course, the great crowds were throwing, pressing against him. He had to get in the boat. We remember the story. And he pushed out a little bit so that he could kind of be, have a little space, a little distance. 
And we see here that Peter, it wasn't that big of an issue for me to let him use my ship, Peter might have said. But then he tells me after I went through all this work of cleaning up my nets and getting them prepared and ready to go out the next day, he says to go out and prepare for a to let your nets down. Go fishing again. And sometimes when we look at that, we think about uh, our service to the Lord. As long as it doesn't cost us too much personal involvement, it's not that big of an issue. It's kind of like letting him sit in the boat and teach. But then Jesus took it a little bit further, and he said, okay, get in your boats and go out and let your nets down for, for another draft. Are we available for God to use? We available more than just something that doesn't really cost me too much. Yeah, you can use my boat. But Jesus had more in mind. He had more in mind. So we shouldn't set limits. When we ask ourselves, am I available? We shouldn't put a but in there. I'm available except. When we say we're available, it's like Peter, his property and his time was available God to use we, for God to use us we must first make ourselves available just as Peter did now look at verse 5 and Simon answering said unto him master we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing nevertheless at thy word I will let down the net now of course we know Jesus was trained as a carpenter he wasn't didn't make his living as a fisherman and here he's advising professional fishermen, men who make their living going out each night and fishing, to go out. And what is it that we can see here and that we can understand about being obedient? Ask yourself, am I obedient? Jesus asked Peter to do something that didn't make no sense to him because he'd just been out all night long fishing and had caught nothing and yeah, I let him sit in my boat and teach the people while I was cleaning my nets. It wasn't no big deal. But now he's asking me to go out and go fishing again. I'm tired. I didn't have any luck before. And that means I'll have to come back and repair my nets again before I can get on home to do what I normally would do. But yet we see Peter says something here that we have to remember. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. He obeyed. He obeyed what he asked him to do. He obeyed what he called him to do. And that's what we have to be asking ourselves. Have I really felt the call whenever Rob has been up there and said, hey, we need fill in the blank? Have I really kind of felt the call to do that, but then just squash it down and said, I'll just wait for somebody else to fill that. I'll just see if anybody, if nobody else will do it, then I'll see. And then maybe if enough time goes by, That's not what Peter did. Something else I want us to understand as we're going through this, talking about our service, talking about the things that we can do to serve the Lord, Peter was unsuccessful without Jesus, wasn't he? In this fishing on that particular day. But whenever Jesus got in the boat, whenever Jesus gave him the command, whenever he obeyed Jesus, and we're about to find out what happens, he becomes very successful. And that's a point for us to remember. So let's look at verses 6 and 7, which will lead us up to our next point. And when they had done, uh, they enclosed a great multitude of fish in their net break, and they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both ships so that they began to sink. So without Jesus, they were unsuccessful. But with Jesus... They were so successful they had to have help. And that's something that we can remind ourselves of. When we try to do something on our own, and I think we've learned that over the past month in our study of Acts, when we try to do it on our own, we're not going to be as successful nearly as when we have Jesus in the boat with us. And then we have to look at the results. You know, we thought we read that. Their boats were about to sink, and that brings Peter to a different place. Am I humble? Am I humble? <laughs> Verse 8, And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, 
for I am a sinful man, O oh Lord. There is no feeling like the feeling of humbleness when we realize, here I wasn't even going to do this. And look at the results that came because of my obedience, even though I was reluctant to do it. And how do you relate that? Well, you relate it to maybe a life saved, salvation. Your efforts may bring a family to church that helps reunite a family, that helps to, to make a life better. A teaching, teaching a Sunday school class may spark a young man or woman's desire to accept Christ as their Savior and may lead to a lifetime of service because of your obedience. We never know what the result will be when we obey. Just like Peter didn't have a clue what was going to happen whenever he let his ship back out uh, to go drop his nets back down. He had no idea that he was going to catch so many fish that he was going to need his buddies to come along and, and take part of the load, or he would have told them, so let's go, guys, we're going to catch a lot of fish. But once he's seen the results of what the power of Jesus and the power of obedience was able to do, what did it do? Depart from me, O Lord, for I am a sinful man. Why was he sinful? Jesus hadn't even been talking about anything like that to this point to him. It's because of his disbelief is what he was talking about. You know, he questioned him. He said, we've been out all night fishing and had no luck, but nevertheless, at your word, I will let the take the boats back out. And he realizes at that point that the only thing holding him back from being successful was Peter himself. And that's a lesson that we can all take as, as well. The only thing that holds us back from serving God successfully is the person that you see in the mirror each morning. Because once we allow ourselves, once we're available, once we're obedient, and humble ourselves to allowing the Spirit to work in us and God to move in our lives as he has talented us to do, there's going to be results. Why? Why? Because it doesn't depend on me. I'm going to try to keep Jesus in the boat, in other words. And as long as Jesus is in the boat, you're going to catch fish. And that's what this whole sermon, that's what this whole section is about. As he continues, look at the fourth part. And then after that, willingness. For he was astonished in all that were with him in the draft of fishes which they had taken. That's verse 9. And so also was James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from here henceforth thou shalt catch men. And then verse 11. And they all brought their ships to land. They forsook all and followed him. That's our fourth point. Am I willing? I don't think, practically speaking, though in the case of Gary and Chris, they, in some ways, could have done that. They felt led, they felt called to go someplace else and serve. They left there. It wasn't from church involvement, because anybody that knows, they were involved in a lot of different things. But whenever the Lord calls upon you to, to move, when the Lord calls upon you to serve in a different area, am I willing to do that? And we should be. We should be willing to do that. Whenever you see that there is a need, and, and it's, you know, we don't have positions here that are just made up, that, that have no responsibility, and that have no purpose. Everything we do here is important. We just have to be willing, just like they said. And when they came back, they forsook all. Now, let's flash back just to the beginning. What was Peter doing at the beginning of this story? He was making preparations for the next day, wasn't he? He was cleaning his nets. He was getting everything ready after a long night of fishing because as far as he knew, tomorrow was going to be the same as today as the same as it was yesterday. But once we allowed Jesus in the boat, those nets weren't so important. The things that we thought were the most important yesterday suddenly are not nearly as important today and tomorrow. And that's what we see here with these men, the disciples. As he begins to call those to follow and serve him. 
is that they were willing. They were willing to take something that they were normally accustomed to doing and saying, this is not as important as the task that Jesus says is at hand. I will make you fishers of men. And that's what we have to ask ourselves as well. Am I doing something, and I'm not saying what you're doing is not important, okay? Because what they were doing was important. But is it more important, are you spending thing, time on things that are more important than what God would have you to do? And that's a question you have to ask yourself. And that's going to be a question that you're going to wrestle with. Because there's going to be some things that you do that you really see value and importance in. But maybe God says, let's put it aside and come and serve me. And then be looking at the last point. So we've got to be available, got to be obedient, humble, willing, asking ourselves that. Am I available? Am I obedient? Am I humble? Am I willing? And then finally... 1 Peter 2, verse 12, if you want to flip over there to the right in your Bibles. 1 Peter 2, verse 12, and we will be starting this, uh, to get a little plug in for Wednesday night. Uh, we will start studying 1 Peter this week, so if you want to come out for that. 1 Peter 2, chapter 12. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Be ready for every opportunity, every day, to make a difference in the lives of other people. That's what Peter's writing there. That's what he's telling us. Once we have Jesus in the boat and we're doing whatever Jesus wants to do, let's be ready and be waiting for the opportunity, and you've heard me say that before, about having the opportunity to witness, having the opportunity to be Christ to someone, having the opportunity to serve as we are equipped, and that's what we see here Peter saying in this chapter. Be ready. Have your conversations. Make your lives in such a way that whenever you have the opportunity, people will know that you're genuine. always trying to help someone. That lady's always taking food to someone's house whenever they have uh, a sickness or a, a, someone has passed away. They're always trying to help out people. You see what I'm saying? That's paraphrasing this is what Peter's writing and encouraging us to do. Once we have Jesus in the boat, once we have our, our past set before us, as he told the fishermen, you know, from here on out you're going to be fishing for men. Be ready. Be ready and willing to take advantage of those opportunities. And that's what Peter is talking about here. And we have chances to do that every day. We have an opportunity to do that each and every day, somehow, somewhere. So let's not let those slip by. So we have revival coming up. And revival is mainly set for those that are in the room. But it's also the opportunity to pique someone's interest to come to church and maybe, maybe get to, to hearing the gospel and turn their lives over as well. Kind of like Peter. They realize, you know what? What's so important now is not as important because Jesus is calling me. We're going to have some good singing groups here, some that's going to appeal to the bluegrass, and, and we're going to have a, a, a man coming in that's going to be, be more appealing to the younger people. So that we can reach both age groups. Let's work to have this place filled up with folks to come out and hear that. Let's make sure that we're here to hear it. Let's make sure that we have Jesus in the boat. Okay? Because so many times we got Jesus in a life raft behind the boat, and we only bring him up to the boat when we feel like we need him. He needs to be in the boat. And speaking of that, if you haven't accepted Christ as your Savior, it's time maybe that you looked at Jesus the way Peter did. Willing to accept the sacrifice that he made by hearing and believing the gospel. 
repenting of your sins and confessing Christ as your Savior, being buried with him in baptism, the likeness of his death, burial, and resurrection, gift of the Holy Spirit, and remission of sins. And then as he, as Peter wrote here, be ready. Live faithful. When you have the opportunity to serve as God has equipped you, serve and move forward in that. Now maybe, maybe we've taken those steps and we realize, you know what? Even though Rob gets it right every once in a while, I've got Jesus in a life raft behind my boat. And I'm guilty of that, and I need to make sure that I've got Jesus in the boat. <laughs> and you need to rededicate yourself to your, your relationship with him, not me. You owe nothing to me. A relationship with Christ is personal. It's between you and him. And maybe you need to repair that, and I encourage you to do that today. We're going to sing a hymn of invitation.